Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered together today on the 18th of the first month, which happens to line up with April 1st of 2023 on the Gregorian calendar. And it's a great time to be alive, obviously. This is the day that the taught ones found out our Mashiach was resurrected from the dead. So the remembrance and every Shabbat, every weekly Sabbath, if you will, is the most important set-apart time that he has throughout the year. It's the most prevalent one, but it represents the resurrection, the millennial reign. And if you know that, then you know how special it is. And this particular one happens to be the one in reality that he actually was risen on. So it's a great day. But we were having conversations and it came up that we wanted to cover the two spirits or two ruachot that rule over every man. The ruach of truth and of unrighteousness. So this is a very expansive um, topic it covers quite a bit of material throughout the history of scripture uh, or inspired text if you will yeah. from the book of Hanok or enoch the first enoch all the way through to revelation you have this theme of the two ways the way of life or the way of death or the two ruach oath or the two entities the prince of light or malchizedek the king of righteousness, and the prince of darkness, or Malki Rasha, the king of evil. Whoever you will, that's the one that you, you serve and the one that rules over you, right? So the first section that we want to read in regard to this is from the Dead Sea Scrolls, specifically from the scroll titled 1QS. And this is going, if you're familiar with the Dead Sea Scrolls, this would be the beginning of the section for the, what they call the community rule, or if you have the new translation, it's the charter of a Yahudi secretarian association. <laughs> but originally, when it was first published, it was called the community rule, or the Yahad rule, right? The Yahad is the theme that's all throughout these particular writings. It's also mentioned quite a bit in the recognitions of Clement, and even in the in the writings of what's called the Anti-Nicene Fathers, the first 300 years, their writings, unfortunately, it's translated as Catholic Church, but that really should be Yahad Kahal, or the United into One Assembly. So without further ado, <clears throat> this is 1QS, and if you have a new translation, it starts on page 117. says, the intelligent, the, the word that's originally here in the translation is instructor, but the Hebrew here is maskil, just like you have some of the maskil poems or psalms in the, in the book of Psalms. There, the word is shekel. It's a type of money, but it's also the word for intelligent. And why they translated it as instructor, I don't know, but I... Even in the text itself, it has this word quite a few times, and they have it as intelligent or intelligence, depending on how it's spelled. So I just corrected it here because it gives us better context for who this is about. It says, The intelligent shall teach the set-apart ones to live according to the book of the community rule, that they may seek Elohim with a whole heart and soul, and do what is good and right before him, as he commanded by the hand of Moshe and all his servants, the foretellers, that they may love all that he has chosen and hate all that he has rejected, that they may abstain from all evil and hold fast to all good, that they may practice truth, righteousness, and right ruling upon the earth and no longer stubbornly follow a sinful heart and lustful eyes committing all manner of evil. He shall admit into the covenant of loving kindness all those who have freely devoted themselves to the observance of Yahuwah's precepts, that they may be joined to the counsel of Elohim 
and may live perfectly before him in accordance with all that has been revealed concerning their appointed times, and that they may love all the sons of light, each according to his lot in Elohim's design, and hate all the sons of darkness, each according to his guilt in El's vengeance. All those who freely devote themselves to his truth shall bring all their knowledge, powers, and possessions into the community of Elohim, that they may purify their knowledge in the truth of Yahuwah's precepts, and in order their powers according or sorry, and order their powers according to his way of perfection, and all their possessions according to his righteous counsel. Now this was written before the times of the emissaries. This was a pre this was before our Mashiach came in the flesh. And you can see here that they were doing the same thing that the emissaries were doing when they were setting up the assemblies, where they had all in common and they didn't have anything of their own. They sold their possessions and share and they shared a mockery of this and today in creation is called communism but it's not based on the truth or or right. <clears throat> it says, They shall not depart from any command of Yahuwah concerning their times. They shall be neither early nor late for any of their appointed times. For they shall stray neither to the right nor to the left of any of his true precepts. All those who... I'm sorry, just one moment. All right, sorry about that. We'll go ahead and continue right here. It says, All those who embrace the community rule shall enter into the covenant before Elohim to obey all his commandments so that they may not abandon him during the dominion of Belial. This is the, the Greek transliteration, if you will. The Hebrew transliteration would be Belial, which literally means worthlessness or without worth and it's used as a title for satan just like satan is a title or semael or mastema or devil these are all titles for that entity right but the children of belial the children of belial mentioned in the original like the old covenant writings that that's the children of satan like our Mashiach talks about to the face of him. This is, but this is the dominion of Belial because of fear or terror or affliction. On entering the covenant, the Kohanim and Luiim shall barak the Elohim of deliverance in all his trustworthiness. And all those entering the covenant shall say after them, Amen. Amen, or so be it, so be it. Then the Kohanim shall recite the favors of Yahuwah manifested in his mighty deeds and shall declare all his merciful, tender, loving kindness to Yisrael. And the Luiim, or the Levites, if you will, shall recite the inequities of the children of Yisrael, all their guilty rebellions and sins during the dominion of Belial. And after them, all those entering the covenant shall confess and say, We have strayed, we have disobeyed. We and our fathers before us have sinned and acted wickedly in walking counter to the precepts of truth and righteousness. And Elohim has judged us and our fathers also, but he has bestowed his bountiful mercy on us from everlasting to everlasting. So confessing and forsaking our sins, right? Not only ours, but the sins of our fathers. It's important, especially when we have generational curses because of these things. And the Kohanim shall barak all the men of the lot of Elohim who walk perfectly in all his ways, saying, May he barak you with all good and preserve you from all evil. May he lighten your heart with life-giving chokmah, or wisdom, and grant you eternal knowledge, 
May he raise his merciful face towards you for everlasting bliss. And the Luiim shall curse all the men of the lot of Belial, saying, Be cursed because of all your guilty wickedness. May he deliver you up for torture at the hands of the vengeful avengers. May he visit you with destruction by the hand of all the wreckers of revenge. Be cursed without mercy because of the darkness of your deeds. Be damned in the shadowy place of everlasting fire. May Yahuwah not heed when you call on him, nor pardon you for blotting out or by blotting out your sin. And remember, this is done to those who are unrepentant. And when you show no mercy, you receive none. If you're unforgiving, you're not forgiven. As you do, it will be done unto you. Right? That's the whole point. May he raise his angry face towards you for vengeance. May there be no shalom for you in the mouth of those who hold fast to the fathers. And after the baraka and the cursing... All those entering the covenant shall say, Amen, Amen. And the Kohanim and Luiim shall continue saying, Cursed be the man who enters this covenant while walking among the idols of his heart, who sets up before himself his stumbling block of sin, so that he may backslide. Hearing the words of this covenant, he barak himself in his heart and says, Shalom be with me even though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart. Deuteronomy 29, 18, and 19. Whereas his ruach, or spirit, parched for lack of truth, and watered with lies, shall be destroyed without pardon. And that should terrify anyone holding to something that just isn't true. Elohim's wrath and his zeal for his precepts shall consume him in everlasting destruction. All the curses of the covenant shall cling to him, and Elohim will set him apart for evil. He shall be cut off from the midst of all the sons of light. And because he has turned aside from Yahuwah on account of his idol and his stumbling block of sin, his lot shall be among those who are cursed forever. And after them, all those entering the covenant shall answer and say, Amen, Amen. Thus shall they do year by year, for as long as the dominion of Belial endures. The Kohanim shall enter first, ranked one after another, according to the perfection of their Ruach, then the Luiim, and thirdly, all the people, one after another, in their thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens, that every Yisraeli may know his place in the Yechad, or community, of Elohim, according to the everlasting design. No man shall move down from his place, nor move up from his allotted position. And this is year by year, or at set times it's mentioned elsewhere in the Dead Sea Scrolls, that the guardian of the of the the group, each each assembly, if you will, because these, these people were spread out all over the place, but each group that was individually located together would have a guardian of the camp. And it's like the overseer, if you will, and it was his job to exhort the people and to test them, if you will on their virtue and their right standing with our maker. And they could move up to their the position that's supposed to be for them or move down at those times based on how they're actually behaving and what they choose to do. But aside from that, you don't move from your place. What you're allotted to as he appoints you is where you've always meant to be. It says, for according to the Kodesh or set apart design, they shall all of them be in a community of truth and virtuous humility, of loving kindness and good intent, one towards the other. 
and they shall all of them be sons of the everlasting company. No man shall be in the community of his truth who refuses to enter the covenant of Yahuwah so that he may walk in the stubbornness of his heart. For his inner being or soul detests the prudent teaching of righteous laws. He shall not be counted among the upright, for he has not persisted in the conversion of his life. His knowledge, powers, and possessions shall not enter the council of the community. For whoever plows the mud of wickedness returns defiled. He shall not be declared right by that which his stubborn heart declares lawful. For seeking the ways of light, he looks towards darkness. He shall not be reckoned among the perfect. He shall neither be purified by atonement, nor cleansed by purifying waters nor set apart by seas and rivers, nor washed clean with any oblation. Unclean, unclean shall he be. For as long as he despises the precepts of Yahuwah, he shall receive no instruction in the community of his counsel. For it is through the Ruach of true counsel concerning the ways of man that all his sins shall be expiated. That he may contemplate the light of life, he shall be cleansed from all his sins by the Ruach of set-apartness, uniting him to his truth. And his inequity shall be expiated, or expiated, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not saying that right, expiated, there we go, by the Ruach of uprightness and humility. And when his flesh is sprinkled with purifying water and set apart by cleansing water, it shall be made clean by the humble submission of his inner being to all the precepts of Elohim. Let him then order his steps to walk perfectly in all the ways commanded by Yahuwah concerning the times appointed for him. Stray neither to the right nor to the left and transgressing none of his words. And he shall be accepted by virtue of a pleasing atonement before Yahuwah, and it shall be to him a covenant of the everlasting community. And this is getting into the section about the two Ruachoth right now and the differences between them. And more importantly, it also covers what will happen to believers or those holding to one or the other at the time of our Creator's visitation. If you pay careful attention, you'll see that this is exactly how things happen to certain people when our Mashiach came in the flesh. Okay? The intelligent shall instruct all the sons of light and shall teach them the nature of all the children of men according to the kind of spirit or ruach which they possess. The signs identifying their works during their lifetime their visitation for chastisement, and the time of their reward. From the Elohim of knowledge comes all that is and shall be. Before ever they existed, he established their whole design. And when, as ordained for them, they come into being, it is in accord with his esteemed design that they accomplish their task without change. The laws of all things are in his hand, and he provides them with all their needs. He has created man to govern the world, and has appointed for him two ruachoth, or spirits, in which to walk until the time of his visitation. And remember, the first time he came, he had the cleansing of the purifying through immersion, and his taught ones were the first fruits of the gifts of the age to come because they were separated from the evil Ruach or from Satan. And unless they committed sin, they were, they were without that in them. Unlike all mankind since the fall. Right. But that was a type. We don't have that currently for anyone that I'm familiar with because that's going to be the state of what's to come. It says the Ruach oath of truth and injustice. 
Those born of truth spring from a fountain of light, but those born of unrighteousness spring from a source of darkness. All the children of righteousness are ruled by the Prince of Light and walk in the ways of light, but all the children of unrighteousness are ruled by the messenger of darkness and walk in the ways of darkness. The messenger of darkness leads all the children of righteousness astray, and until his end, all their sin, inequities, wickedness, and all their unlawful deeds are caused by his dominion in accordance with the mysteries of Elohim. Just like it says in Yaakov's epistle, Elohim does not, he does not entice anyone to evil, right? It also mentions that in Sirach, where he he's permitted no one to sin, and he doesn't need a sinner to accomplish anything. He hates it. Every one of their chastisements and every one of the seasons of their distress shall be brought about by the rule of his persecution. For all his allotted spirits seek the overthrow of the sons of light. And that's why our battle's not against flesh and blood. But the Elohim of Yisrael and his messenger of truth will succor or comfort all the sons of light. For it is he who created the, the messenger of truth, right? For it is he who created the Ruachoth of light and darkness and founded every action upon them, and established every deed upon their ways. And he loves the one everlastingly, and delights in its works forever. But the counsel of the other he loathes, and forever hates its ways. These are their ways in the world for the enlightenment of the heart of man, so that all the paths of true righteousness may be made straight before him and so that the fear of the laws of Yahuwah may be instilled in his heart, a ruach of humility, patience, abundant charity, unending goodness, comprehension and intelligence, mighty chokmah which trusts in all the deeds of Yahuwah and leans on his great loving kindness, a ruach of discernment in every purpose, of zeal for right laws, of set-apart intent with steadfastness of heart, of great charity towards all the sons of truth, of admirable purity which detests all unclean idols, of humble conduct sprung from a comprehension of all things, and of trustworthy concealment of the mysteries of truth. These are the counsels of the Ruach to the sons of truth in this world. And as for the visitation of all who walk in this Ruach, it shall be healing, great shalom in a long life, and fruitfulness, together with every everlasting baraka and eternal joy in life without end, a crown of esteem and a garment of majesty in unending light. Yet the ways of the spirit of falsehood are these, greed and slackness in the search for righteousness, wickedness and lies, haughtiness and pride, falseness and deceit, cruelty and abundant evil, ill temper and much folly and brazen insolence, abominable deeds in a spirit of lust, and the ways of lewdness in the service of uncleanness, a blaspheming tongue, blindness of eye, and dullness of ear, stiffness of neck, and heaviness of heart, so that a man walks in all the ways of darkness and guile. Now, heaviness of heart has to do with being sad, which is alluded to, it's mentioned also in the Shepherd of Hermas and a few other places. But it's joy is unto the righteous, right? And we are to rejoice in Yahuwah always. Again, I say rejoice. The opposite of being sad. 
I believe Shaul also covers this topic distinctly, but the shepherd of Hermas does as well, where there's a sadness that leads to destruction, heaviness of heart, and there's a sadness that leads to repentance, which is being convicted of your error and being saddened because of it and repenting, which is something that, again, Shaul goes over in his epistles. And the visitation of all who walk in this spirit shall be a multitude of plagues by the hand of all the destroying messengers, everlasting damnation, by the avenging wrath of the fury of Elohim, eternal torment and endless dishonor, together with shameful extinction, in the fire of the dark regions. The times of all their generations shall be spent in sorrowful mourning and in bitter misery and in calamities of darkness until they are destroyed without remnant or survivor. The nature of all the children of men is ruled by these, and during their life all their hosts of men have a portion of their divisions and walk in their ways. And the whole reward for their deeds shall be for everlasting ages, meaning without end, according to whether each man's portion in their two divisions is great or small. For Yahuwah has established the Ruachoth in equal measure until the final age, and has set everlasting hatred between their divisions. Truth abhors the works of unrighteousness, and unrighteousness hates all the ways of truth. And their struggle is fierce in all their arguments, for they do not walk together. For in the mysteries of his comprehension, and in his esteemed chokmah, or wisdom, Elohim has ordained an end for unrighteousness, and at the time of the visitation he will destroy it forever. Now, when our Mashiach comes again, Everyone that's in sin and doing evil is going to be destroyed. But those that repent, even up to the time where he's administering that and the millennial reign's about to be consummated, right? Like the times of Yahushua bringing the children into the land. There will be some that in those times repent and make a covenant with our maker. And they will be preserved. But everyone in sin and unrepentant will die. That is not the that is not the visitation that will be the final one forever, because after the millennial reign, you have Satan released for a, for a time, and then after that, the great white throne judgment, and then the new creation. And it's with that visitation of the Most High that, that the evil will be destroyed forever. Yahuwah will then purify every deed of man with his truth, and he will refine for himself man's frame by rooting out all the spirit of unrighteousness from the bounds of his flesh. He will cleanse him of all wicked deeds with the ruach of set-apartness. Like purifying waters, he will shed upon him the ruach of truth to cleanse him of all abomination and unrighteousness and he shall be plunged into the Ruach of purification, that he may instruct the upright in the knowledge of the Most High and teach the wisdom or chokmah of the sons of Shemaim to the perfect of way. For Elohim has chosen them for an everlasting covenant, and all the esteem of Adam shall be theirs. There shall be no more lies, and all the works of unrighteousness shall be put to shame. Until now, the spirits or ruachoth of truth and unrighte unrighteousness struggle in the hearts of men, and they walk in both chokmah and folly. According to his portion of truth, so does a man hate unrighteousness, and according to his inheritance in the realm of unrighteousness, so he is wicked and so hates truth. For Yahuwah has established the two ruachoth, in equal measure until the determined end, and until the renewal, 
and he knows the reward of their deeds from all eternity. He has allotted them to the children of men, that they may know good and evil, and that the destiny of all the living may be according to the Ruach, or spirit within them, at the time of the visitation. And again, just as there's three ages, there's three visitations. Our Mashiach came once already. He's going to return for the millennial reign. And then the last visitation is when the Most High himself will come to judge the world after it's been destroyed by fire. So I think we might continue on these another time, but this one was a pretty decent one. And we covered some extra topics on the, on the side there. I thank you all for joining us on Shabbat, and may we all be edified in his word and truth. Shabbat Tov, and we'll see you next time.